Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be servicing a Briggs & Stratton 148cc 450 series engine. So then, to get this mower serviced, well, the engine serviced anyway, all we need is a flathead screwdriver for undoing the screw in the air filter, an NGK spark plug, it's a 1147B2LM, I'm hoping that's the right one, I was on the phone to the dealer and that's what they sent me through according to their records. We need a 19mm spanner or socket to undo that spark plug. I'd normally put them on either a ratchet or a small adjustable, depending on how sort of difficult they are to get at, it's always worthwhile. There's an air filter here, these are old sponge type ones. Um, we've sort of moved on a lot from them, they're normally paper ones with a rubber seal, but you know, that's what goes in here. So it's a 43376, that's the part number on there. And then we move on to the oil. Um, we've got straight SAE 30 oil in here. You can put 530 in them and when it's new, it's probably recommended. However, when they get old and they've done a lot of hours, like any old vehicle, Land Rover, mower, engine, they just start to get a bit worn and you need something a bit thicker. So a straight SAE 30 oil is, uh, is good for these really. So that's everything you need there to get this serviced. So let's start. The first thing we do before we service any engine, as I say many, many times before, I know the safety features on the mower, but if you just disconnect the spark plug by pulling the lead off there, we pull that off, then it cannot start. If you turn the blade, pull the rope, whatever happens, it will not go because there's no electrical current. So we take that off as a matter of safety, okay? Now, easiest thing for me to do is undo this air filter over here. The mower looks a little bit dirty, right? We blew it, up, blew it off, gave it a little brush off to get rid of the debris, but I'm not spending hours cleaning and polishing a mower if it's not gonna run properly. So we just clean the stuff out of the way to make sure it's easy and tidy enough to work on without getting any muck and stuff in things. Do that first and then we can sort of service it. If it works, then we can get set about cleaning it and making it look pretty. So we'll take this air filter cover off. That's over your side. Now always remember it's lefty loosey, righty tighty, so it's easy to undo, anti-clockwise. There's a long thread on there. Now, as you've probably seen in other videos, I have these little magnetic trays around. If I put the parts in there, I don't lose them, they don't fall off the wrench and rolls, roll around, so put them in there. So we'll take this, this air filter off and it's come off in one block, not just the lid. Right, <laughs> it's a bit dirty, <laughs> blimey. Right, that seems to be soaked in oil, fuel, whatever's in there, I don't know. So we'll give that a clean up. That's another thing I failed to mention. I should have one behind me. We've always got them around. Whenever you're servicing these mowers, always handy to have a bit of rag around and you can wipe these things off. Get them sort of cleaned up and tidy. So, and we can see that they might have had a bit of a problem starting this. It's come to me because they can't start it so they've just given it to me, see if I can do anything with it. And the easiest thing to do is just give it a service first of all, and if that doesn't cure it, then you know to look deeper. But a lot of the time, they just need a bit of TLC and things cleaning up. Now this is absolutely filthy. The muck is unreal. So I can give that a bit of a clean off. Now, we've also got another tool in our armory. If your rag's not good enough to get this off or you want to give it a deep clean. We can always turn around, I think we've got some over here. Carbon air intake cleaner. That's like a, a degreaser in itself. You spray it on there. It's like a, almost like a dry spray really, but you can spray that on and then you can rub it off with a, with a rag and it brings a lot of the oil with it. But there's no need for us to go mad and get too serious with this one first. Is we'll just see if it works. And if it does, then we can take it all apart again and give it a deep clean. But if we can just get it up and running, that would be the greatest thing, wouldn't it? So we've cleaned the, both parts of that. And we'll just give a rub around the top of the carb there. Now, I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a seal on there or not. We've got a plastic ring. And that plastic ring fits down. I think that is about as good as it gets. That's, it sits on top 
and I think that is in effect your seal, this little bit here. So we'll clean that off and make sure that's clean. Again, we'll clean round on the top and just make sure we get a, a better seal there on top of that. Now, we'll get the new air filter, open that up and we'll see. <laughs> There's a bit of difference between those two, isn't there? Just a bit of difference. So that's going to cause a problem. That's choked up with fuel, oil, and whatever else dirt and grime is in there. So it's not going to be sucking clean air through there. It's going to be so hard to suck it through. You're like trying to suck air through a wet sponge. It's just not going to work very well, is it? So with a new air filter, that should hopefully give us a fighting chance of getting it up and running. we we'll just squeeze that in. And like I said, we clean that out first because we don't want to put that sponge in and then pull it out and it's filthy straight away. So we'll put that in there. That's that done. And then we'll put the lid on. Just make sure we get it round the right way. Okay, so that's on. Clip it down, clips in nice and tight. And then the screw is back over here. Now, there's no need for anything on that screw. No need to grease it up or anything. It's in there, it's got a nice, shine to it so it's not dirty put that back on and we just tighten that up you can put a bit of pressure on there there's no need to go mad you need it to seal you don't want to screw it on too tight and crush it in but you do just need a good seal okay so that's the air filter change that was an easy job eh? that's an easy job Next, we'll do the spark plug. So get your spanner. I'll turn this round a little bit. Maybe you can see a bit better there. Your spark plug's in. And what I like about these 450 series engines is the spark plug is in straight line. Now, a lot of the time we're working these spark plugs in at an angle. They're going up slightly, down slightly, to the left, to the right. If you're screwing something in straight down, straight up, straight across, it's a lot easier to match the threads up and put it through. So you've got a lot, a lot less chance of cross-threading it, which is one of the main things we see with these engines, is people try and put a spark plug in, they're reaching round, they're pushing it, they think that's about right, and they tighten it up. And it's, if you do the threads in on this block, it's as good as scrap, so you don't want to do that. Right, let's take this out. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, that's dirtier than the air filter. I didn't think that'd be possible, but that's dirtier than the air filter. Let's just have a little look at our new spark plug and we'll see how that compares. Right, we've got the new spark plug there. I'll just put them side by side just to make sure they're all right. Regardless of numbers on the box, you just match them up and make sure everything's great. The washer on the new one will always be a little bit thicker because it's compression washer and that's what forms your seal. So it'll always be a little bit thicker. Once this has been in and tightened up, it squashes that washer down and it's obviously then a little bit thinner because it's already made the seal the first time. But we'll show those side by side and you can certainly see the difference in those, you know, absolute filthy. And that one is nice and clean. Now to put these in, you just screw them in as normal. People think that you might have to put some grease on it, you might have to put some oil on it. No, you don't. Um, it does get hot in there and it can sort of warp the thread slightly. However, on these NGK plugs, they're shiny on there because there's a special coating that acts as a lubricant when we put them in. So I'll just lean over and I'll put that in. Nice and steady. There's no need to rush this job because you want to get it screwed in properly. Now that's finger tight, okay? So with it being finger tight, we then put this on and we'll probably go about a quarter to a half turn, depending on how much we need. So there you go. I say that's a half turn, no more than that. You want to make a good seal, just push that washer down slightly, but there's no need to sort of over tighten it and damage things inside. So that's the spark plug done, air filters done. Now, all we've got to do is change the oil. So I'll turn the mower around so you can see what I'm doing and we'll sort that job next. 
So we spun it round then, and naughty me, I connected the spark plug back up. I should leave that undone while we're still messing around with the engine. Right, changing the oil then. We've got a little cap on here. It's got the oil filler cap on with a couple of drips coming out, so you know that's what it is. It's a bit tight, so there's a little slot in the top. I'm not sure, maybe there might be a special tool for this. I'm hoping this screwdriver will do it. Yeah, that's it, that's undone that, right, that's fine. Maybe there's a special tool for these, uh, these engines that will fit on the top there. It's done it with a screwdriver. Now I'm expecting this oil to be dirty and I'm not disappointed, am I? Look at that, filthy. You knew it, didn't you? The, the air filter's all gunked up, the spark plug's gunked up. You know the oil's going to be bad, really. So it's been in there for a long time. Now there's a couple of ways of getting this oil out of here. Um, what we normally use is one of these pumps. We can put it in the top and we can pull it up, get the oil into there and transfer it into an old container. Or if you haven't got one of those or the seals go on there, which they do sometimes, you need to get the oil out. Now we can take this out and we can tip the mower over and we can drain the oil that way. Make sure there's no petrol in the tank. Before we bring these into the workshop, we always drain the tank. Number one cause of mowers not starting is bad fuel in the tank. People leave it in for year after year after year. It turns a little bit sticky, a little bit gunky, and it gunks the carb up and it doesn't work properly. It stops the needle, it stops the fuel flow. So we take it out of there. So when we're starting them again after a service, they're always with fresh fuel. So we know we've eliminated everything that we can. So back to the oil then. You tip it over and you can tip it out. And if you do use that method, I suggest you use, have, oh, we'll buy yourself one of these little oil pans here. You tip it in, as you can see ours is always used for mowers. We've got grass and whatever in there. So the oil goes in, it's no good, but it will just drain into the middle. You can put the plug back in and that'll hold 10 litres. So you can service, you know, 15 of these mowers without any problem in one of those. So that's that. I'll put that down out of the way. We'll try and use a suction pump today. Now, it's not always 100% effective, but neither is tipping it over. If you tip it over, and even if you leave it upside down for three days, you still will not get all the oil out. As long as you've changed 90% of it, that's all you really need to do. It's just changing the oil. It just helps to lubricate the engine a bit better. When the engine's running, the piston's going up and down, and it does start to score a little bit. And there's little bits of metal in there and they come off and they float around in the oil and the oil circulates and traps all those little pieces of metal. Now, if you don't change the oil, they get more and more metal in the oil and it starts to prematurely wear the piston and it starts to slow the engine down. It doesn't work efficiently and will ultimately stop. So when we change the oil, we're taking all the bad stuff out with it and we're putting in new oil, fresh, clean oil, and it can start the process all over again. So that's the reasoning behind that. Now, I'm gonna give it a go, that suction pump. This might take a while. So I'll do the first one and show you how to do it. We put that in and we pull that up. You see that coming up through. Now you can feel on there, there's a lot of tension when I'm pulling that up. A lot of tension. And then hopefully we'll see if there's any coming out. There's a tiny little bit dribbling out. We'll put that into there. You can see that coming, flowing back out, can't you? Flowing out, so thick and black. Just push that down into there. And then that's that oil out. Now, we'll go again, see if we can get some more. I think that is more or less it. There's not a lot in there to hold the suction. These work on suction, so when you lift it up, if there's not a lot of suction there, it can't hold the seal and it'll just dribble out like it did then. So there's not a lot in there. I think we've got at least 90% out, but we'll just double check again. The beauty of these pipes is you can put them in and we can sort of bend it round a little bit, can't we? And try different places. So I've got it to go in a bit further then. About there, see if, oh yeah, there's plenty of oil in there. Oh no, it's not as much as I thought. You'll probably hear that. Yeah. So we'll lift that out again. 
I just put my finger over the end, stop it. There's a bit, there's a few mil in there. So that's that. Right. So that's the oil out of there then. Just give that a wipe off. Put that down on top of the oil storage container. Now I'm going to just clean this off. Make sure I haven't got it all over the place. That's nice and tidy. Good. Happy with that. Now we need to put some fresh oil in. As I said, SAE 30. Um, with these oil going in, probably about 400 mil, 500 mil max. Uh, in there we've got about 400 mil. So if I just put that in, squeeze it through, and then we can test with a dipstick and see how much is actually left. Word of warning with these dipsticks, between the minimum and the maximum on there, two little lines, minimum and maximum, there's probably only about 100 mil between the minimum and maximum. And that's because a lot of the oil sits down underneath in the sump. And when the mower started up, it then pumps it up and circulates it around the engine to stop it wearing and to try and cool it. So that's how that works. So there's so much oil in the bottom and it's a big pan that it'll only come up to that line. But once we've started to fill it and we got to that line, it quickly comes up. Right, that's about all I can get out of that one, I think. So we just have a quick check. Make sure that's all clean and put it in. Now, whenever I change the oil, and I'm checking the amount of oil in, I always twist the dipstick down just to make sure it's seated where it should be. I don't just put it in because I know it's only a few mil, but it could make all the difference. Now, I'll just do that again and see where we got it to. It looked to me like we just got to the minimum mark. So I was probably right with about 500 mil, I think. You can't really see on there how far up it's gone, but I think we're about halfway up there. So with us being halfway, I'll just put a little spot more in. Hopefully if I have a route round on the back, I should be able to, oh, I got one. Should be able to find another bottle. It'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Halfway through a service and run out of oil. We've always got plenty of these around. We can buy these in huge tubs. Um, However, you're then putting them into these smaller jugs and stuff and messing around and it's easier to just to buy them in a smaller one and just put a bit in at a time. And you buy, two, you buy one of these oils and it's got a litre in there and like these mowers, 450 to 500 mil, you will easily change the oil twice in one of these. So it's always a good investment. And it's a handy little bottle to store it in rather than having a big five litre or 20 litre container. In with a dipstick again. That's it, bit of trouble threading it there. There's a big rubber seal on the top which you stop any oil spitting out when the engine's sort of running and getting up to temp. So pull that out. Right, we're pretty much there now. Pretty much there. We're almost at the top of that. I'll just double check that again. Screw it down. Make sure we get it in. It's supposed to go. Pull it back out. Now, it might seem it takes a long time to change the oil in these things, but it's worth getting right because not enough oil in there and you get premature wear on the engine. Too much oil is probably even a bit worse than not enough oil in there. It's, uh, it floods everything through and it does untold damage. Right, so we've got about the right amount of oil in there now. So I'm happy with that. So I'll pop that in. Put that back in, that's finished. So let's have a quick run through then. We've done the spark plug. We can put that back on because we've finished messing with the engine. We've done the air filter. That's all tidy. We know that's clean and put back in and more importantly dry. So that can suck air through to enable the uh, engine to combust the uh, petrol properly. And we've changed the oil and we've got good oil in there and we've got it to the correct amount, the correct depth on the dipstick. All we need to do now, we'll move the bench out of the way, put this on the floor, put some fuel in there and we can give it a pull and see if it goes.
Now here's the exciting bit. Let's get some fuel in and see if it fires up. So we've got the little fuel cap over here, got the unleaded petrol symbol on there. So that's what that, we'll put that in. Now this is fresh fuel. It's only been in here a few days. If you're going to leave fuel in cans for a long time, you need some fuel stabiliser in there really. It stops a, loads and loads of problems. So we'll put some fuel in. Now I'm not going to put a lot in there. I think these tanks take about half a litre, something like that. But I won't put a lot in, just enough to wet the bottom, maybe a little bit more than that. Just so we can get a good circulation of fuel around the uh, edge. I was looking for my rag then. Clean that off. So we get that, that's that done. So put that in, now I've lost the lid off there, there we go. So the problem with this, I need to use those magnetic trays and put the stuff in as I take it off, because I'll lose everything. Right, we'll put the lid back on. Right, that's a bit tight on that thread there. I'll tell you another little tip to look out for. In the top of these fuel caps, there's a little breathable membrane in there, and that allows air into the fuel tank, because if you just put a blank cover on, it causes a vacuum and the engine would stall. So there's some little pinpricks in the top of there, and if I hold them up to you, you probably can't see them, but I can see you through them, so I know that they're open and they're working properly. i just get that threaded in. Right, that's on. We fueled up, all serviced up, fueled up and ready to go. I'll turn it round and I'll see if I can give it a start. I'll tell you what, because this is so low down, I might have to stand up and have a go at this one. So we'll do that and hopefully it'll go. Fingers crossed. This is a moment of truth then. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. There's a little primer button on the side here. Uh, press three times. We'll just do a couple of those. Um, probably about five times for five. And that should pump some fuel in and around the engine. Uh, before we start it, I'll just give this, mm, blimey, that seems tight. I'll give this a couple of pulls just to, just to circulate the oil really and pump a bit of fuel through so we know that it, uh, it's primed and ready to go. And then I'm going to go for it now. <laughs> Fingers crossed it'll start. Let's hope it does. It did look filthy and everything was dirty, but these Briggs and Stratton engines do respond well to new plugs and filters and a bit of a clean round. So let's see if it'll go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, happy days, happy, happy days. Yes, yes, yes. Right, so I won't run it too long because obviously we haven't got great ventilation in here, but there you go, it started up, it fired up and it ran. There was virtually no smoke in there, so I should say it's pretty clean. So I'm really, really happy with that. Um, it wasn't 100%, so there's a few other things we can look at, but that's a whole other video. You know, this is just a basic servicing video and it shows you how you can get something so filthy and unclean and you can sort of change the things around and get it to start. So I'm happy with that. If you enjoyed it, then please say something nice in the comments below. You can give me the thumbs up and subscribe as well. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm Jimmy the Mower. I'll catch you on the next one.